Here in this video, I want to show you some of the new scattering nodes in Houdini 18.5. So I'm going to first of all start with this rock demo. So I will scatter around rocks around a cylinder. So here in Houdini, let's start out by a grid. So place down a grid node. And in here, we're also going to place down a sphere. And we're going to merge them together. And now I have this grid and sphere. Now, first of all, my sphere is not a polygon type. So let me switch here the type to a polygon. And we're going to increase here the frequency. So we have more divisions. Now on there, I'm already going to use a new node called Mask by Feature. So this node was already available for like height field sensor one, but we now have this for geometry as well. So by default, you won't be see anything. So we're going to make sure we click on the handle here. And now we see a mask. So by default, it's based here on the direction. So this handle is the direction. So everything that is facing that direction is selected. Now, if you don't want this, we can always disable this. And now we also have here cost shadows. So this is costing a shadow. And again, I can control this by a handle and the direction here, but I also can disable this. And you can also here enable occlusion. So this is the ambient occlusion, and this gives them this result. Now, one thing you might notice here is that this is all stored the mask information in our geometry. So our sphere can take a lot of information because it has a lot of polygons. My grid, on the other hand, is quite low. So we're going to go back to the grid. And we can increase the rows and columns, or we can always place a subdivision node. And in there, we can, for example, set this to 3. And now, when going back to the mask, you will see that you have a little bit more detail to work with. Now, furthermore, if you scroll to the bottom, we can also have a remapping. So, remap. And in here, we can, for example, take the invert of this. So, what I want to do now is sort of select where I would like to have my mask. So I want to have rocks scattered around the sphere. So I want this area to be selected. So I can even play around with the ramp here as well, like so. You can also go back to the ambient occlusion settings and we can, for example, increase some of the blurring. Maybe increase here the bias or lower this. So we can tweak these settings. So maybe if you want to have it more intense, like so. And then we can further use this in some of the scattering nodes. Now, one problem here is I want to scatter only on my grid, basically. I don't want to scatter rocks here on my sphere. So I want to deselect here this part. Now, there are a few ways of we, how we can do this. And at the top here, we can see we can fill in a group. So we can fill a certain group where I would like to have a mask on. Now to do that, we can, for example, here cl just click what we would like to have as mask. So we can click the grid. But now again, this is not that procedural. So what we can do here is we can here on the grid create a group node. And we're just going to call this, for example, the ground floor. And now I can use here the ground layer. So this is a more procedural way of doing that. Now, another issue we can say is that when I, for example, here delete my sphere, so I have to blast, blast away my sphere, we still have this red area inside of the sphere. So it will also, so that means that we're also scattering around rocks in the middle of the sphere. What I did to remove that is here in the group node, I'm going to here go and select uh, select by bounding box region. So instead of a primitive, let's switch this to points. I'm going to go to binding box and my sphere is then my bounds. So instead of here, bounding type, I want to use here bound by object. So we can see that we can select now this area. What I also sometimes like to use is the other one. So bounding box by volume. And you can see that this won't work. And that is because we have to transfer the geometry to a volume. So I'm going to use an ISO offset. And with this node, we can just convert this to a volume. So we can increase here the samples. And now we have the volume. Now, furthermore, to make this work well, let's play around here with that slider. And normally around one should be a good value. So we can see we are not selecting 
that middle here. So that means that our mask will not be selected in the middle. So let me go back to this one and we can already see here that it is working. And the great thing now is that with the slider here, I can actually tweak this a bit more. So with the slider, I have some tolerance here in how much I should select. So as you can see, you're selecting a few points. So one should be a good value normally. And now we have this. So let's now bring on some of the scattering. So we're going to start out here by with the scatter and align node. So this is the new scatter node. So the, basically what I like about this one is it will also automatically handle scaling. So here at the attributes at the bottom here, you will see that we have an output for radius, which is called P scale. And we also have uh, automatically orientation on it as well. So the scaling will automatically be handled based on the distance of the points. Now to visualize scattering also more, we are going to use a sphere and a copy two points. So this will really help visualizing that better. So now here back in the scatter, let's go up. And here we can then have our first mode. So we can just scatter on the geometry. So this is, so this is what I wanted to do. We can also have other options here, but I just want to scatter points on geometry. Now then we have the coverage, so we can play around with that. Or we also have here the methods. So in this case, I want to control the density by our mask. So here, density, attribute, and I want to use my mask that I just generated. And this already gives us an example of the scaling is automatically handled. So it will scatter around these points and it will, and it will then automatically scale based on the points its distance. So as you can see, this scales nicely to each other so they don't clip in each other or so on. So they nicely fit one by one. So I can also increase here the density. We can also play around here again with the coverage. And furthermore, we also, if you want to have certain orientations and alignments, we can then also have that here. So alignment means in what direction they are facing. And then here, random rotation, so we can rotate it, but with a sphere, it's not that visible. So let's just give this uh, full radius here. Now, next up, if we think about the scattering at the moment, we have small rocks close to our sphere, and then the bigger ones are farther from my sphere. But I actually want to have the reverse. So when I scatter points close to my sphere, they need to be bigger. And when they are farther away, they need to be smaller. So the reason for this is if I would go back here where I create my mask. So whenever we have a red value, so that means there will be a lot of scattering. So there will be a lot of points here in this area. So that means there will also be smaller scale. And then whenever the value of the red is going less, that means that there will be less points, which means bigger points in scale. So we need to go in a mask by feature, go to this ramp here. And with this ramp, let's place this in the middle and let's bring this one down. We can then here control a bit more where I would like to scatter and place uh, these uh, spheres. So let's say I want to have maybe something like this. So I want to have bigger spheres here and then smaller rocks here around it. And as you can see, this is sort of what is happening now as well. And I'm just going to visualize this here and keep my ramp active so I can do this. So I can nicely follow along. What is also a good idea is to actually select all the points. So hold shift, select the beginning and end, set this then to, for example, here, let's try this one. And you can see that there will be more curve in there instead of a flat result. So I would like to have maybe something more like this. So this is maybe a bit better. Let's also play around here with some of the coverage. Let's reset that, play around with the seat. So next up, what I want to do is I will use a new node called attribute pieces. And with this node, we can then control uh, multiple models and assign them to a P scale value. So we're going to plug in here my scattered points. 
And we also need a geometry library. So I'm going to quickly load in a library. So here I have a sort of like a library of models. So it's just a sphere with a mountain. And then I pull reduce it to keep it a little bit low in poly count. I also match the scaling and center them. And furthermore, I will add an attribute which has the name. And I just give it the name rock one. And I will do this then four times. So I have then rock two, rock three, and four. So I just played around here with the with the mountain to get the variation in there. And that's how I can get some rocks. So you can also do a loop here or do or load in custom models, quixel models, and so on. So we can just drag that in here, and now I have a library. Now I want to use this in the p-scale value. So we're gonna here the mode. I'm gonna set this to map attribute. Now in here. We're going to, again, look at the p-scale. And I want to here have a more custom range. So we're going to here have a parameter. And we're going to click plus icon. So let's do this three times, for example. And now we can say what piece should be linked to the p-scale value. So let's say rock 1 should be there. And then whenever the p-scale value is between 0 and 1, we will see rock 1. So let's say from 0 to 0.3. We will have rock one, then rock two from 0 0.3 to 0 0.6, and then here 0 0.6 to 1. And then we can, for example, say 3. We can also assign mutable, so 4. Now, to bring this all together, we're going to use a copy to points. And in there, we're going to have our model and our points. So copying them now will just return in everything. But we, of course, need to here use the feature here that we can assign different pieces based on naming. So we're going to use name. And now we have assigned different models based on the scaling value. What can also be a good idea for visualizing is bringing a color node. And we're going to color a, a random from attributes. And let's use our name. And as you can see at the moment, I don't have that many variation, and that means that my p skill, my input p skill, is probably mainly using rock one. So we're gonna lower this, let's say to point one, and then here point one, and then also lower this as well. So we can say point three maybe here, and then point three to one, and now we have some variation in rocks. So we can always go back here, play around, for example, here with the coverage, having them less, more. We can then also increase the density, having way more rocks, having way lesser rocks, and so on. I also feel that I might need to place a transform. And maybe I need to scale up my rocks a bit in general, like so. I think that's a bit better. We can also hide the color here again. I can also bring in a merge and merge that original plane here with my new rocks. This is actually the final setup that I wanted to show. So we have some control here where we are placing rocks and so on. Need some nice scaling variation. There are also other features that I have not showed you. Let's just, for example, here at the top, we can then use, uh, for example, scatter on constraints, which is also interesting. So we can grab another node here we can for example generate only a few points and then based on these points i can then scatter around here these points so if i switch this to the other one you can see that based on these input points we are going to scatter around them so that's really interesting as well so as you can see we can then sort of like cluster different rocks together and this is also showing nicely the, the scaling again, so we don't have to worry about a nice scaling variation. So we can here play around with that, have some more variation, try out different modes, like for example, just size. Like this is not working that well. This could be some interesting results. So again, a lot of different ways you can experiment with this. I'm gonna remove this, set it back to normal here. 
And another thing we can also do is we can, for example, quickly switch this from an AO based to a, for example, shadow based. So we can uh, select the shadow region. It's probably not that visible. I'm going to reset my renting here. And now we have it better. I'm going to invert this. I'm going to remove direction mask here. So this is the shadow. And if I now watch the results, we then have here rocks scattered based on the shadow. So if you want to have specifically rocks scattered based on a certain direction, like from the light or so on, you can then control that here as well. So again, we can try to switch that out and play around with it. So this was sort of the base setup that I wanted to show you. Very useful, very powerful. And now let's move on to a other demo. So for this demo, I'm going to use a sci-fi kit bash. I used the one from Sebastian you see here. Definitely check out his work. Some awesome hard surface modeling. This is already here in my scene, the result that I have with this. I also linked it to a time frame so I can get some procedural variation. And this is basically the same setup as with the rocks. So here I'm going to go over it. So I start with a torus. I added some noise to it. So let's visualize the noise. And I'm going to scatter my models based on that noise. So again, I will use density and I will use the noise that I generated. Then I'm going to use the attribute from pieces. And as you can see, I just copy pasted the system that I had previously. I'm still using that rock one and two. So I can just copy paste what you just built with the rocks and plug in other models. And I'm going to copy paste here then these models. So I have subtracted a few models from the kit bash. And I'm using that in the system now. So again, the cool thing here is that the scaling is automatically done. So if I have lower uh, points, if I have lesser points, you can see that the scaling is automatically fixed for us. So these are quite huge models. So let's say I have 50 in scale and density, the models are automatically here scaled down and try to fit nicely without colliding too much in each other. So you can see that it gives us a cool result here with the sci-fi kit bashing. So I've also taken this a step further and here I can make this sort of out of the kit bash a, a sci-fi suit. So I just used the test geometry from Houdini, so the body template, and I scattered around uh, models on that. So you can just copy paste the system, do the same thing here. And as you can see, I can also link this to the time frame so you can generate different versions. So this can be also really interesting to concept artists, for example, who are looking to concept some sci-fi suits so they can just generate it, take screenshots, render this out, open this in Photoshop and paint on top of this. So really useful there as well. So this is just mainly meant to inspire you to also to try out these things, try out multiple creations, use it in different projects and so on. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.